Hello, I'm Stuart Bloor. I'm on my holidays. I have more holidays than Judith Chalmers. And do you know what? Just arrived beachside and I've left the attachment to my camcorder. Not at home, fortunately, but in the place where we stay. So my wife has gone back and she's going to bring it down. So instead of filming at arm's length, I'll be able to film off the tripod. Anyway, while I'm waiting for my wife, I'm going to cast out, see if I can get me an early fish. Come on, Debbie, hurry up. I want to do some filming. I haven't got all day. I was just saying, Debbie on camera, what a great wife you are. And not many women would do that for their husbands. Now this is what you call a fish. Fantastic. The rods had only been in the water maybe five minutes or so. And I've got this just as the tide is about to hit the low water mark. I'll tell you something, I'm a happy camper already. Not to be outdone, my wife has only gone and caught not one fish but two, no rod or reel, no bait. Tell us what you've done there, Debbie. I just picked them up off the sand, two little sand eels, and the one's alive, so I'm going to put him back in the water. I've just found another one, so I'm going to put him back. I'm often asked by other anglers, especially coarse fishermen, I'm going on holiday, can I use my carp gear or my pike tackle to go sea fishing? Well, in certain conditions and in certain situations you can, but generally speaking you need the right gear for the job. And I fish with a beach caster, I've got multipliers and I find that they are useful because I can get that little bit further if I need to, fix spool reels, sea ones are okay, but they give you that little bit of an edge sometimes. And this is an occasion when I'm just needing to get beyond the breakers and put the bait where the bass are. And of course, there's the rig. That's very, very important. Now, if you fish flooded rivers for barbel, you'll be used to four ounce and five ounce leads. And as you can see there, I've got those grips. And what happens is you cast out, tighten up, and they will hook into the seabed. And when you get a fish, or you retrieve anyway, they just come out like that. So that's easy to bring back in. But they are useful, especially when there's a little bit of 
pull on the sea, you want to keep your bait in that one place. Then of course the rig, well the one rod that I'll be fishing with is using a standard three hook, hooks, hook length, snoods, call them what you like, just a standard three flapping around above the lead. But on this particular uh, setup I'm using one that will obviously be on the deck and then just a foot or so above that there's another one that's flapping about in the water and I'm after bass as you've gathered already I'm fishing with ragworm I do fish with log rag sometimes sand eels but you know what if something works then that's a good thing isn't it a lot of anglers say oh no never fish ragworm for this species or log for that or whatever but I find that my sea fishing works but above all and this is the most important thing if I'm enjoying it that's what counts bait is perhaps different if you live by the coast and you have access to stuff I'm a holiday angler I have to get what I can sometimes the tackle shops only have lug rag or whatever so I pick up what they've got and I'll fish with it regardless because do you know what as long as that bait's in the water I've got a chance anyway let's get this one in I've only been here about 20 minutes and already I realise that I've got a massive, massive problem with weed. Now of course it's not just the weight of it pulling the lead around but cast it in, I've got a crab there. So I'm not a blanker but of course what's happening is that this weed is masking the hook. Apart from here of course I've got the crab. really is a problem this weed this is the second rod and as you can see this is just just some of the weed it's getting very very difficult to fish in fact I would say it's impossible I'm going to give it a, a few more casts who knows the weed might be passing through but it looks like at the moment that I've got a lot of the stuff out there now I'm not a quitter but sometimes you do have to be realistic so if I do have to cut my session short well no problem I've got just one rod out there now due to the weed. As I said, it is a, a massive problem. But I've just had an amazing experience. Yesterday, I did a little bit of fun fishing for Ras off the rocks about three miles down the coast. Anyway, as often happens when you're fishing off the rocks, I lost my gear. So my float down, everything went. Well, can you believe it? A big piece of weed that I just pulled in what was in there part of my rig that I lost three miles down the coast what are the chances of that I'll tell you something you've got probably more chance of winning the lottery and the way this weed is I've probably got more chance of doing that than actually catching a fish tonight I've now decided to come and fish off the rocks. I've lost a lot of tackle. It's been a bit of a disaster in some ways, but you know what? This dogfish has rescued the day. And it's only a small one, as you can see, but it's a brand new species for the week. Lesser spotted dogfish, doggies as they are, known of course by sea anglers, rescue the day. But it's always great to catch something like this. And yet another species. They keep coming out, don't they? Keeping the best till last. 
Well, the video comes to an end, and of course our holiday draws to a close as well. Deb, we've had a great time, haven't yeah, it's we? it's been brilliant, yeah, really nice. And this is the place that we're staying in. Fantastic. Mm. Yes. Right on the sand dunes. Literally just two yards or something yeah. from the start of the sand dunes. What have you been watching tonight? Stand chat. Stand Very chat. Nice, yeah. We can see them from the kitchen window. Yeah. yeah, they're lovely. Really nice. And of course, if we look behind us as well, we've got the uh, sunset there. Sunset. I think I could get used to this, Deb. Yes. <laughs> That's the light. Do you think one day we could live in Wales? <laughs> Maybe. Well, watch this space as they say. <laughs> yeah. But for now, back to the grindstone. I yeah. hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out the written blog via the comments box here on YouTube. Out and about yourself, tight lines, and if you're birding, as I've done a lot of that this week, then I hope you see something special.